Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to highlight product categories in a stunning Divi website hero section. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so right now we're in the admin dashboard of our website. Let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So here on the pages, you can name this page whatever you want. So I'm just going to call this Mac category. Click on use the Divi Builder. So for this tutorial, we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to click here on build from scratch. And the first thing you want to do here is to come over here to the top left and click here on this gear icon. So here we want to start by setting up our background colors. So I'm going to click here on background. And then I'm going to click the second tab because we want to add a gradient color. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And our first color here is going to be white. So I'm just going to add my white color here. And on the second color, this is going to be a custom color. Now, the color I'm going to be using here can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So if you want to use the exact same color, just head over to the post and uh, you can follow with the same color step by step. So the next stage here is to make sure our gradient type is set to linear. And then over here on the gradient direction, this needs to be set to 90 degrees. And finally, our start and end position needs to be set to 50% on both start and end. So the next thing we need to do is to add some padding to our section. So I'm going to come over here to my design tab, spacing, and I'm going to add padding to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to set this to 130 pixels. Now, if you want to add the same value both to the top and the bottom, all you have to do is to either type in here as, uh, again, or you can click here on this chain icon. So if I do that, you'll notice that the value now has been applied both to the top and the bottom. So that's all we need to do here on my section settings. I'm going to go ahead now and save. And then the next thing we need to do now is to add our columns. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button. And this time we're going to add two equal columns. I'm going to select this. So next we want to come over here to our row settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. And then I'm going to click here on background. So the first thing we're going to do here is to add our background color. So our background color here needs to be applied to column one background. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and add my color. Now my color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to drag this slider down until I get these values. And then I'm going to paste them between the brackets. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so moving on, the next thing we're going to do here is to add an image to this background. So I'm going to click here on this third tab Click this plus button and the image I'm going to use is here already in my media library. So in your case, you would need to navigate to the image on your computer. And the dimensions we're using here are 880 by 1042 pixels. So once you've selected it, go ahead and click on upload image. Now there's a few customizations that we need to do here to the image. So first of all, we're going to come over here to our image position. So currently it's set to center. So we want to make sure that it's sent to set to bottom center. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And over here for the uh, background image blend, we're going to set this to multiply. So I'm going to select multiply. And make sure that it, over here on column one background image repeat, it's set to no repeat. Now let's move over to the next uh, column background. So here we're going to go to column two background and add our color. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And all we have to do here is to add white. So that's going to be our column two background color. So with this set, the next stage now is to make sure that our width is set to a custom size. So I'm going to click here on design. Okay, so over here, the first thing we need to do is to make this row full width. So I'm going to click here to activate, make this row full width. And then next, I'm going to click here on use custom width. And here we have an option to enter either pixels or a percentage. So make sure that you have pixels selected. And then over here, we're going to add our value, which is 2000 pixels. Next, we're going to come over here to the gutter width. Now the gutter width is the distance between the columns. So make sure you activate it and let's uh, set it to one. So the lower you get it, it means that you don't have any spaces between them. So you notice here when I uh, increase it and when I decrease the space goes away. And then over here, equalize column height. I'm going to set this to yes. Right, so let's move on to the padding. So I'm going to click here on spacing. And here we need to make sure that we set the padding to zero, both on the top and the bottom. 
And then next, we're going to add a very subtle box shadow. So I'm going to click here on box shadow. And the option I'm going to go with is this one right here. And our blur strength needs to be set to 80 pixels. So over here, I'm just going to change this from 18 to 80. So you can see here, it's very subtle. So that's all we need to do now. Let's go ahead and save. And the next thing we're going to do is to add a text module to column two. So we're going to come over here, click this plus button, and I'm going to search for my text module and select it. So over here, you can add you know, some dummy text. So I'm just going to call this your health is priceless. But of course, you can add any text in here. Next, we need to uh, set this to heading one. So I'm going to highlight it all. Come over here to paragraph. Select heading one. Now let's go to the heading text settings. So I'm going to come over here to design. Heading text. And make sure H1 is selected. So we're going to start here with um, setting this to ultra bold. So I'm going to come over here. Select ultra bold. The text size needs to be set to 60. So I'm going to start off by adding here for my desktop. And then for my tablet and phone, we're going to set this to 50. So I'm going to come over here, uh, hover over this area, click on this little icon and set this to 50. And we're going to do the same for the phone as well. And then scrolling down here on the letter spacing, we're going to set this to minus one. And the line height, we're going to set this to 0 0.8. And then I'm just going to switch back over here to the desktop tab. So the next thing we need to do is to add some margins. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here, click on spacing. And for the top margin, we're going to set it to 17VW. So that just adds a lot of space here above this text. For the padding, we're going to come over here to padding left and set it to 2VW. And we might as well add our values for the tablet and the phone. So I'm going to click here on this little icon. Click on the tablet. And on the tablet, we're going to set it to 4VW. And that's the same for the phone as well. So over here, if you feel like you want this in a straight line, all in one line, you can always cl click here on this little brush tool and reduce the size. Uh, so I'm going to drag this here until I have it all in one line just like that. But I'm just going to leave it as it is in, uh, in two lines. So I'm happy with that. So for now we're done. I'm just going to go ahead and save. And the next thing we need to do here is to add a divider module below this heading text. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my divider module. So I've just searched for it. I'm going to select it. So let's give this divider line a color. So I'm going to click here on design color. And I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my, my color here. Now for the divider style, uh, let's come over here to styles and uh, by default it's set to solid, but we want this to be double. So I'm going to select double. And then let's head over here to sizing and set the divider weight to six. And then we're going to head over here to spacing and set our top margin to 2VW. And for the bottom margin, we're going to set it to 15VW. So all we're doing here is to just add a bit of space above this divider and also below the divider. So that's all we need to do for now. I'm going to go ahead and save. And the next thing we're going to do here is to add our second row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And the row structure we're going to go for is this one here right at the bottom. So I'm going to select it. So let's close this for now because we need to make some uh, changes to our, to our rows. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my row settings. Click on background. And we're going to start with column one background color. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and add my color. Now, as we did before, we might as well go in and add our sizes. So I'm going to click here on design, sizing, use custom width and make sure you have pixel selected. And then over here, we're going to set it to 2000 as we did before with the, uh, with the top one. And for the gutter width, we're going to do the same. We're going to activate the gutter width and reduce this to one. And then for the spacing, we're going to add zero to the top and the bottom padding. And then we're going to scroll down here to our box shadow. Choose our box shadow and we're going to set the blur strength to 80. So that's all we need to do for now. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And then over here on column one, we're going to add a text module. So I'm going to search for it. Select it. So 
Over here, I'm just going to replace this with some uh, dummy text. But of course, in your case, you can add the text that you need. So I'm just going to add this to its own line. And just make sure that I set my top line here to heading three. Now, let's make some adjustments to our text. So I'm going to click here on design text. And we're going to set the color to white because it's on a dark background. And then here on the font weight, we're going to set this to light. And for the text size, we're going to set this to 18. And we might as well add the tablet and the mobile device. So I'm going to click here on this little icon. And then for the tablet, we're going to set this to 15 pixels. And for the phone, we're going to set this to 12. Right, so over here on the line height, we're going to set this to 1.8. So I'm just going to come over here. And in fact, we need to set it to 1. And for the text orientation, it's fine at left. So make sure you double check that and make sure it's set to left. And for our text color, we're going to set this to light. Now let's uh, set our heading text settings. So I'm going to click here on this little brush tool. So that's going to take me straight to my heading settings. So the first thing we need to do here is just to make sure it's set to white. But of course, we already have it here in white. But the only thing that we need to do here is to set our size. So we're going to scroll down here, set this to 25. And for our smartphone and tablet, we're going to click here on this little icon, click on the tablet, and we're going to set our tablet size to 20. And for our phone, we're going to set this to 18. Now over here for the heading letter spacing, by default, it's set to zero. So we want our text to be closer together. So we're going to set this to minus one pixels. So you can see here right away, the text is now closer together. Now, as you can see here, our text is, very, is way too close to the edges. So let's add some padding. So I'm gonna scroll down here and click on spacing. So the first thing we need to do here is to add our padding to the top and bottom. So we're gonna set this to 30 pixels and then activate my chain. And then left and right padding, we're gonna set this to 50. So I'm just gonna add my 50 here and activate my chain as well so that my size is added to both sides. So now you can see our text sits beautifully in this rectangle. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. So over here, we're also going to add a text module. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my text module. And then we're going to just going to add some text here. And the text is going to say all products. So we're going to give this a default background color. So I'm going to come over here to background and paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So while we're here, we're gonna do something a bit different. We're gonna add a hover background color. So you just need to ho uh, hover over here on background and then you, when you see this arrow, just click on it and then click on the hover tab. Click here on this area and paste your hover color. So this is what's going to happen when you hover over this text. Now let's add our text settings. So I'm going to click here on design text. And the first thing we're going to do is to set this to ultra bold. So I'm going to click here, set this to ultra bold, uppercase. And the color here is going to be a really dark gray. So I'm going to click here on the eyedropper tool and add my color manually. And uh, let's scroll down here and add our size. So currently it's set to 14. Let's set this to about 16. Just make it slightly bigger. And for our text letter spacing, uh, we're going to set this to minus one. And for the text orientation, we just need to make sure that this is centered like that. Now here we're also going to add a hover effect on the color. So let's scroll back here to the text color and click this arrow. So I'm gonna click here on the hover tab and this time for my color, we're gonna set this to white, okay? So you can see here, that's gonna be the hover state. So as we did before, this text is way too close to the edges. So let's add some padding. So I'm gonna scroll down here and click on spacing. So for the padding, I'm gonna add 45, both to the top and the bottom. And for the left and the right, I'm going to set this to five pixels. Right, so what we're going to do next is to add some hover spacing. So this effect is only going to happen when we hover over this area. So I'm going to come over here because we need to add our hover on the custom margin. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on hover. And I'm going to start with our top margin, which needs to be set to minus 50. And for 
the left, it needs to be set to minus 20. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. So over here on the top padding, we're going to do the same as well. So I'm going to click here on this little icon. And for the top padding, we're going to set this to 70. And this 5 pixel here on the hover is fine. So I'm just going to add it again one more time. Next, we're going to come over here to the box shadow. So we're going to choose uh, this uh, style. And we're going to set our shadow color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and set this to... In fact, I'll paste my value between the brackets, just like that. And for our blur strength, let's set this to 80%. So over here on the shadow color, we're going we're gonna, to um, add a style here on hover. So I'm going to click on this little icon. And while we're in the hover tab, I'm going to click on my eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and save. So what we're going to do here is we're going to clone this text module and add it to the two remaining columns. So to do that, we're going to use a shortcut. It's Command C to copy and Command V to paste. If you're on a Mac, if you're on a PC, it's Control C and then Control V to paste. So I'm just adding my shortcuts in here. Now all we need to do is to do some inline editing. So I'm just going to highlight this and just call this Best Sellers. And then we're going to go into the actual module and change the color. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on background. So I'm going to come over here and then paste my color. So you can see it's slightly different to the other ones. We're going to save this for now. And for this one, I'm going to go into the uh, module settings and also change the text and call this new product. And we're also going to change the background color. Okay, so that's all we need to do for our design. Let's go ahead and save and do a quick preview. So I'm going to save this, save the page, and then we're going to exit the Visual Builder. Right, so let's see. So we can see here when we mouse over it, we have a very good animation here. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.